Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Grand and Group Presents The Lockbox. And for those of you listening on the podcast, it is still Arizona Real Estate Showcase. Memorial Day weekend, 2021. And we have our lovely guest, Angela. Hello, good morning. Angela, where are you from? Is it morning? Um, I am from Arizona. No, you're from the Hendricks team. Oh, yes. VIP Mortgage, right? I am from the Hendricks team at VIP Mortgage, yes. And how are mortgages doing? Um, they're great. There are lots and lots of people looking to buy homes these days. Um, mm-hmm. And not only buy homes, but also refinance. So no, it, it's, are good. It, it's crazy. The yeah. Grandin Group, uh, powered by Corcoran Platinum Living, has been swamped. This has been one of the most incredible years we've had. Yeah. And uh, it's really great because Memorial Day, you know, we get to celebrate a lot of things. Yes. And so you're in red. I I'm am in, in blue, red. Yes. And our special guest, Bob Jenkins, with Vets Built Construction, is white. in white. Yeah. So, anyways, we're, Bob, glad that you're here today. I'm glad to be here. It's a pleasure. No, so what, what's amazing about today is, you know, we always talk about the lifestyle of Arizona and why people love Arizona. And um, we're really honored since it's Memorial Day weekend to have you in because Bob was not only in the building in 9-11, he's also a U.S. Marine. 40 years? Uh, Four years. Four years. Four years. 75 to 79. Wow. And so uh, what was it like being in the Marines in in that time compared to the kids that are in there now? Uh, Well, we always, you know, we always look back and, you know, like back in the day, back in the day, back in the day. But uh, it's still the Marine Corps is still, it's still the Marine Corps. We're still proud of it and proud to have served for it. And Angela, you, you're, my dad was in the Air Force. Yeah, mine was in the Army. And then oh, there's an acronym for the Army. And what, what is that? <laughs> I've never heard this acronym. <laughs> Are we allowed to say it? Hey, we're allowed to all say right. it because okay, okay. all our military friends love it. What, well, what and anybody listening to this who was, who was in one of the other services knows the acronyms for the Marine Corps. But Army stands for aren't really Marines yet. And I'm sure all the other military people love that, don't they? <laughs> No, but hey, you know what? Seriously, we love you guys. Yeah. And, um, you know, just being able to serve the country and give back is really important. It's fabulous. It's, it's, it's one of the greatest honors that you can do in this country. No, absolutely. And there's some countries that require you to be in the military, absolutely. like Israel, for example. You have to serve right. at least a, a lot of European military. countries. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So before we get into, you know, why you're here and stuff, because... Angela, this is going to be a great lead-in for you. Everybody right now is remodeling, if they can't, which yeah. they can't buy. Yeah, they're absolutely. remodeling. So we'll get into that in a minute. But I've, I've got to hear a little bit. Um, you were actually in the uh, tower during 9-11. I was on the 39th floor of Tower 1 when the first plane hit the building. No, that, that's, I, I, I mean, I can't even imagine something like that. And if we were talking before the show started. How do you think, how did the Marines prep you to handle that plane hitting the building? Uh, it's a great question, and it's, uh, it's, it's, I took a course when I was in the Marine Corps. They sent me to Okinawa to go to what was called WSSI, War, uh, Water Safety Survival Instruction School. Marine Corps was losing a lot of men between a boat and the beach. They were drowning, and the Marine Corps made the decision that Every Marine would be basic water qualified in survival, at least know how to float and swim a little bit. So they sent us to the school. We were the first class to learn how. We were, the, we were taught to be the instructors, and then we'd go back to our bases, and we would then teach Marines how to survive. It was some of the most rigorous training that I did in the Marine Corps. It was incredible, really, really, really good. But one of the classes we took one day, we had a gunnery sergeant that would jump on your back while you're in the water and try and drown you. And he was really good at what he did. And the, 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 the point, the lesson that you learned after going through this for a while was panic is what kills people. And so they taught us how to fight that urge, how to fight panic. When it happens, you can feel the adrenaline kick in. You can, you can, anybody in this room who's ever been in that position, you can feel it. You know it's coming on. They taught us to, to acknowledge it and immediately shut it down. And so when the plane hit the building and that building started swaying and you know what hit the fan, everyone in the room that I was with I could see their eyes. I were sitting at a table, you know, very like where we're at right now, and I could see all of these people. And the building then started to convulse wildly, which is what a lot of people don't know. 
And I watched these guys, and I could see the panic in their eyes, and then they all just got up and started to run. And I thought, Bob, you need to stay really cool. You're on the 39th floor of the World Trade Center in downtown Manhattan. Um, it's not an earthquake. Earthquakes don't explode. Because I was a combat engineer in the Marine Corps, I had uh, part of my job, a big part of my job, was mines, demolitions, um, construction, and we did a lot of demolition work. So I knew what demolitions felt like. I knew what it smelled like, uh, the whole thing. And so I watched these guys get up and run, and I literally just sat in my chair like I am right now, and I said, Bob, you need to stay really, really cool. Um, it's not an earthquake. I grew up in and around Manhattan. I knew it wasn't an earthquake. Earthquakes don't explode. I felt the percussion come down through the building like a bomb had gone off. And so I just sat there, and I just waited. And I said, you got to stay cool. And I thought, well, you know, they always teach you to get underneath <clears throat> the doors, you know, the frame of a door for security. And I laughed at that. I thought, yeah, you're on the 39th floor. you got 90, 70 floors on top of you. That door frame is not going to do any good. And so I literally just sat there and waited until I was calm. The building was convulsing back and forth. There were chairs falling, computers coming off desks. Walking on the floor was like walking on jello. And I managed to get over to the windows. Um, and as I got to the windows, I looked out the window and literally off to my left, down in the harbor, I was looking at the Statue of Liberty. The Hudson River was right in front of me. The piers, uh, the Ninth Avenue piers were right there. I could see the um, New Jersey, the Palisades Cliffs, and I could almost see Chicago because it was so clear. And I remember looking up at the sky and I saw the white paper, ticker tape. That's what it looked like, snowflakes, ticker tape, from where the upper floors had been blown out. And the white against the cobalt blue was just beautiful. And I stuck my hands deep in my pockets, and I looked down, and I looked at the ground, and I said out loud, so this is where I die. And I was completely at peace with it. I knew that the building was going to topple over, and I knew that there was nothing I could do, and I said, so this is where I die. And uh, it was a very peaceful feeling. Then, thank God, the building stopped convulsing. <clears throat> and as the building stopped convulsing, I heard a woman yell, there's been an explosion in the mechanical room on the 42nd floor. So I thought, okay, the building's not shaking anymore, and it's three stories above me. So I'm getting out of here. And the only thing I had in my hand was... Um, uh, a notebook, and I don't mean an iPad notebook. I had literally, like, you know, pen and paper notebook. Right. And I was supposed to go to Toronto that night. And so I uh, just grabbed the notebook. My overnight bag, my computer were still in the conference room. And I went over to the stairway, and I opened the door to the stairway. And I literally had to do a double take. When I opened that door to the stairway and I looked in, it was completely, completely full of people. And I literally did, you know, a double take and went, where did all these people come from? And then I just walked into the stairway and walked down the stairs, which is, a, Robin's heard this story numerous times, and it, there's no good way to end it, but I, I that's a whole nother story. No, that's, that's, that's amazing. It's, uh, you never get to hear real-life stories like this from people. So what brought you to Arizona? I, uh, after 9-11, and I, I used to sell video conferencing equipment, and we were selling a, a, a desktop, an IP video desktop solution to Lehman Brothers. And um, after 9-11, people ironically thought video was going to explode and take, no pun intended, take off. Mm -hmm. And it didn't. It, I, Cisco was the big dog, and a lot of other things happened. And so video actually kind of imploded. Uh, you heard a lot about it. You know, the president's doing a video conference. You heard a lot about it, but it really didn't do anything. And so I got out of the industry and went back into construction. I started building, and I was doing a lot of flipping uh, buildings in, uh, in Charlestown, right outside Boston. And so I got back into that, became a dealer for a home builder, and uh, did really, really, really well for years. And then I saw the construction industry start to crash. And um, I had another company that I was running, and uh, 
it all just fell apart. Literally, literally just fell apart. And uh, so I said, well, if I'm going to start over, I'm not doing it freezing my butt off in New England again. I have family that live in Phoenix. I'm going to go out. At least it's warm out there. And I literally packed everything that I owned. And I had a Toyota 4Runner. And I packed up and I drove cross country in my 4Runner looking like Jed Clampett. And uh, moved out here and started completely over. And I started Vets Built Contracting with my younger brother, DJ. And uh, we started off kind of as a handyman business and very quickly said, you know, you can't make the kind of business that we want doing that. You've got to be a general contractor, which is what I'd done in Boston. And so here we are six years later, and we're doing extremely well. No, that's great. And Arizona's a fantastic market for construction. I mean, it just seems like it's never going to end. What, what do you... Uh you get a lot of people that are remodeling, or are you doing full builds from top to bottom? A uh, little bit, a little bit of everything. Uh, our brand is doing really well because when we started Vets Built, thus the name Vets Built, um, <clears throat> we the goal was to immediately look for and hire and put veterans to work. So we've probably got about fifty subcontractors in our pool. And out of those 50 subcontractors, we probably have about 40% of them are veterans, veteran-owned. One example is uh, my electrician. John is not a veteran, but Travis is a Marine. So when I do jobs, I always ask John to send Travis down. We can't always do it, but we try, and we always try to put our veterans on our jobs and hire. Then we also donate money, time, and effort to a lot of veteran causes. No, that's great. And do you find that Arizona has been really receptive to having a veteran-owned company? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, money's money, and, and, you know, people are conscious of budgets and what have you. But if it comes to us and another general contractor doing the same type of work, uh, chances are good we're going to win it. And then what, do you, what kind of response are you getting from veterans around the country for having a veteran-owned business? <clears throat> You know, that's a great question. Around the country, not yet, although we have discussed trying to take this and and, and literally uh, replicating it and franchising Vets Built. Um, It's a lot of work to do. It's not that it can't be done. Franchises are done every day. Um, But it's something that we've discussed doing this across the country. And so, Angela, you guys at uh, VIP Mortgage – are able to help provide a lot of the people that are buying homes refinance, right? Yeah, absolutely. Or cash out refis? Yep. If you're looking to refinance because you do want to do some remodeling, um, now's a really great time. Uh, you know, values here have gone up tremendously, so a lot of homeowners have quite a bit of equity. So it really is a great time to refinance with the Hendrick team, pull out that money, and then, you know, go and do your remodeling um, of your home, add a room, um, update your kitchen, you know, whatever. So, Bob, you, you guys don't do general small stuff like hanging ceiling fans. You're more of remodel and big jobs. Yeah, with the, that, the, we we kind of started off the handyman stuff doing that, <clears throat> and then as I said, very quickly uh, we got away from it. So we're doing uh, we do a lot of remodels. Like our 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 basic bread and butter kind of business is uh, go in and gut a kitchen, all new cabinets new ceiling lights, um, countertops, all appliances, plumbing, electric, et cetera. And usually like in the $30,000 $30, range for a kitchen, and that's kind of our bread and butter for that, a master bath, uh, gut it, new tile, pan, fixtures, everything in the eh, eight to probably $10,000 range. And then you know we we did a couple jobs last year. One was three hundred and sixty thousand. Uh, another was two two fifty. Um, so we've done a couple of you know pretty good sized projects as well. No, that's great. And you're supporting veterans while you're doing it. And yeah. we support veterans. So now Bob lives up in Carefree. Carefree, correct. So how'd you end up in Carefree? Because Carefree is the north part of the valley. It's a spectacular part. So it's kind of like a suburb of Scottsdale, but not. Yeah. Uh, you got Cave Creek, Carefree. Yeah. So how do you like that lifestyle up there? I love Carefree. I, I, I really do. Um, you know, it's funny that I grew up in New England, and when I got out of the Marine Corps, I was in school in Boston. I lived in New York City. I, I've been in and around cities my entire life, and never, ever did I dream that I would be a small-town guy. It just wasn't not going to happen. 
I love small town. And, and Carefree is actually a really fast-growing area. Prices yes. are ridiculous. But one of the things about <clears throat> Carefree is you have to go to the post office to get your mail. That's <laughs> And the fun that comes with that, when you sign up for something, pick anything, and you say, I don't have a physical address here. Everything has to be delivered to the post office. And they still, there are certain places that want your physical address, and then they're going to mail something to that address, and you're not going to get it. Right. It'll drive you a little bonkers. But still a great place. It's it a borders, great place. It borders Cave Creek, so you can head over to Cave Creek and enjoy. I, I'm a mile from Harold's. It, it's it's oh, fantastic. Fine. So it, your company works all over Arizona? Uh, all over the valley. Um, I don't think we've gone as far as Tucson, uh, Queen Creek. We did a job down there a couple of years ago and then quickly realized that you know time is money. And, uh, you know, it's funny, people will contact us and they'll be outside that perimeter that we will work in. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they'll be like, well, you advertise here. And, you know, it says that you do work here. And go, well, yeah, but it's an hour and a half each way. Right. So I'm going to charge you three hours a day times five. That's 15. That's, you know, two days work. I'm charging you for those. And all of a sudden they start to calm down. Right. Like, well, maybe we'll find someone a little bit closer. Well, and in this market, too, it's, I mean, it's tough to find solid guys. And all your guys are... Uh, general contractors and have been through the construction trade? Pretty, yeah, yep, and y yes. The, the big problem that we have, and I say we meaning my little itty-bitty company here in Phoenix, and we as a, as a full-blown society, is that we have fewer and fewer and fewer people coming into this business. And, you know, everybody's college education, college, college, college. Well, that's great. You got a college with a degree in anthropology and, you know, you're 100 grand in debt. Uh, but that's not going to do much for you. We have a 10-year knowledge gap in this business right now. And it's just growing every year. And sooner or later, people go, well, that, you know, that's not a big deal. You know, the light bulb goes in my house. Someone will come change it. Well, yeah, in your house, that's right. What do you do when the grid in Phoenix goes down and your electrician's you don't have somebody who knows how to fix that. Or you have a water main break, you know, in the middle of Scottsdale, and you don't have plumbers that know how to fix it. You know, an infrastructure, welders, every single person in these trades, we need to start bringing young people in and doing it. And we're, we're losing them. I mean, we are losing them really fast. There's contractors around the valley now that are stealing guys from other job sites. I've heard stories of people, you know, going to an architect and saying, what do you get paid? Well, we, you know, we'll pay you this plus this. Right. Because um, you can't find people. So we have a real, real need um, to do that. There's a couple of schools, uh, Evett, East Valley Institute of Technology. Uh, West Tech is another one. Um, I contacted uh, Evett not long ago. And uh, the guy that I contacted there was a former Marine, and he walked in front of his class and said, hey, I've got a contractor that's looking for, and two of the young guys in the class stood up, contacted us. One of them is now working full-time for my cabinet guy, and he says it's fabulous. But we need many, 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 many more people like that. Well, and as a veteran, uh, the military offers this kind of training as well. The, so. the military offers it when you're in, and the good news is, is, is the VA – We'll pay for that training. So anybody, you get me started. One of the things that we did when we, we started Vets Built was I also wanted to go out and start finding homeless vets and getting them off the street, getting them a place to live, getting them in school, showing them what their VA benefits are, because a lot of them have no idea they even have VA benefits, which could include things for post-traumatic stress, you know, whatever might, other disorders, things might be wrong, but they'd actually have some money coming in through the VA and then get them into a school like Evett. And two or three years later, we could have these guys out, you know, electricians, plumbers are making really good money. A, a basic carpenter right now is making about 20 bucks an hour. Uh, a good plumber is making 35, 40. Electricians are making 40, 50 dollars an hour. Some of these guys are making 60 bucks. I talked to these guys. One of them's up in Alaska fishing as we speak right now. I'm not in Alaska fishing at the moment. Uh, my, I'd like to be in Alaska. <laughs> Me too. My my electrician took his whole family to Hawaii on vacation not long ago. So anybody who thinks that these are dirty jobs below them, think again. You know, these are really good skilled high paying jobs and we need people desperately and we not not just me and my business we 
you guys, the whole country, we need these people because when we run out of them, there ain't going to be anybody around that knows how to fix this stuff, and we're going to be in a real problem. No, absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, Bob, what's the best way for everyone to reach you? Give them the website and your number. Here's my phone number. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, hey, I we want them to call it, and, you know, we, lo- we love it when hey, people use that. Hey, speaking of phone numbers, I just, I just signed up for this thing called RoboCall. The other day, it works great. <laughs> 20 times a day, I see this thing pop up, and it goes, this number, and we don't recognize it. And um, I'm happy. So, yeah, the best way is uh, bob at vetsbuilt.com, B-O-B at vets, uh, V as in veteran, E as in echo, T as in tango, S as in Sam, built, B-U-I-L-T dot com. Angela, what do you think? I, I couldn't agree more. I think... Um, Obviously, a lot of kids are focused on, or parents are focused on their kids going to college, uh, which I think is a great thing if you're on a path to, you know, and you need an actual degree um, to be a doctor or, or what have you. But um, there are so many kids, I think, that are missing the bus um, and not realizing that, that those trade schools are out there. Mm-hmm. And actually, I mean, you get out of that and you're starting right away with a really nice high paying job. So L- low debt yeah. and high paying job. Exactly. Put those two pieces together. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I, yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. And for those of you that are looking to <laughs> maybe hire Bob and refinance your house, right? Yeah, Angela, absolutely. how can they reach out yeah. to the Hendricks team? They can give us a call. Uh, our number is 623-979-5523. Or obviously they can email us as well. Uh, Hendrick team at VIPMTGINC.com. No, that's perfect. And, you know, this Memorial Day, you know, we just we have to give a special thanks to all the veterans. And um, I know, you know, since we're time limited here, the stories are absolutely amazing. So we're definitely going to be hearing some more and stuff. But um, other than that, we want you to support the vets. We want you guys to get out there. If you're not able to purchase a house, you should maybe consider remodeling. Yeah, absolutely. And we, absolutely. we can hook you up with that and stuff. But for those of you that are out there looking to buy or sell, Grandin Group, Arizona's number one brother and sister real estate team, can help you out. And uh, Bob, thanks for coming on. Angela? Yeah, thank you. Thanks for your service. Sauce for another episode of The Lockbox. We'll see you next time.